and courtesy of the Friday Kids subreddit. It says, this guy sucks. And I think, I think this may be triggering for me because this is another example or, or kind of um, buys into the theory that Brendan may be a little bit racist when it comes to the blacks. My theory is, which is a really shitty theory, but my theory is more than likely Brendan had a bad experience with a black person playing football. Because I think that's always been his number one love. He always wanted to make it as a professional football player and it never kind of worked out for him, right? He wanted to be in the NFL. He's got friends in the NFL. Um, he was on practice squads, blah, 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 blah. His dad made him start playing that from the beginning. It's the number one sport he follows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think there was a time in his position where he got to a point where he was about to make it and then a whole group of black guys, super strong, super athletic, kind of blocked his route. And ever since then, he's had a little bit of a, um, you know, he's had a little bit of a grudge there against some of the blacks. That's my humble opinion. Or the other theory is that somebody black may have stole his girl. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, if we're not mistaken, I think his wife prior to him actually had all black boyfriends in it, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe that's the case. But he's always had a little bit of a situation going on there with the blacks personally. My alarm bell started to ring when um, Malik B said when him and Chappelle were on the fire and the kid, Brendan wouldn't let them bring up stuff about BAM. Like they had to pretend it wasn't happening. The whole George Floyd shit. They had to pretend it wasn't happening. They couldn't speak about it. Wherein, you know, which is okay if you don't talk about politics, but Brendan always speaks about politics on his show. He's always fucking talking about fucking politics, right? So if that's the case, why is it selective shit? You know? That's what I'm thinking. So anyway, it's close to the Final Kids subreddit. It's called This Guy Sucks. So let's see Brendan being a fucking ally to the blacks. Let's see what he says here. Let's see. There's a hint of racism right here. Yeah, I remember Miss Pac-Man coming out and that being all the craze. Mm. So I'd go to Okie Dog down the you street from where I live, out? Okie Dog, and then yeah, like allowed we would play Miss Pac-Man. Can you try to get... That's not even funny. That's something to get packed out on, to be fair. You know what I mean? He's lucky as a trained UFC fighter because that's something to get packed out on. They used to, used to, like, what? Aren't they about the same age? How old is Eric Griffin? Eric Griffin age. How old is he? Eric Griffin, how old is he age? Oh, he doesn't even come up in terms of his age. You can't. He's 50. Oh, shit. He's 51. Damn. Okay, my bad. It, like all of the. Uh, what happened? He said they allowed blacks back then? In the, in the <laughs> so they, oh, yeah, look. There's a black guy on the thing. Look. Yeah. And he's losing? There's a hint of racism. Is Eric even black? I'm surprised. What, what is he? Is he mixed race or something? Is he? I don't know. He's given Moroccan, Egyptian, I don't know, Afghani. He doesn't really give me mixed race. Black in that regard. Or am, I, or am I bugging out? I didn't know he was fucking black, to be fair. Legitimately, I had no idea. I just assumed he was Afghani, Tunisian, Egyptian or something. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't have the attitude of a black guy, right? He seems kind of annoying, you know? Like, he's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't have any uh, swag. He's not like, the only thing that's black about him is maybe his comedic singing voice. That's about it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, he just seems a little bit like a dweeb. There's nothing black about him in the slightest. Is I'm right here? Do you guys like your freedom? You like, like, be, yeah. like. Oh, he's mixed black and white people are saying, okay, cool. He's black and white, 50-50. Okay, fair enough. I still want to see what kind of black his other side is. You know what I mean? Like, if you know, you know. You know I want to see what kind of black person they are. That will tell us a lot. Have an opinion of freedom? Yeah. Thank him. Yeah, you're thank welcome. Thank him. You're welcome. Why are you sending it to the black people? To thank who? To thank a white man for their freedom? This guy, honestly, man. Look at Malik. <laughs> Look at that, Brendan. <laughs> Tim fights for you. To be fair to Brendan, though, he's never liked Malik. Malik was always Brian Callan's friend, right? And Brian Callan would always talk really well about Malik. Oh, there's this black guy. He's super good looking. He's in great shape. He's really funny. He's athletic. He could have been a pro in basketball. And all these things are triggers to fucking Brendan, right? Because he's a, he's a former athlete that kind of gatekeeps. He's like, oh, you want pro. You want this. It don't count, don't count, don't count, right? So he loves to gatekeep. And he also has this thing about everybody that is ripped and in good shape who is a similar age as him has to be on steroids 
there's no way you're doing this naturally. So anytime somebody's doing it naturally and just using, you know, with discipline and fucking hard work, he always has something to hate about it. So he's always hated Malik. So I can understand his kind of friction towards him a little bit. But Chappelle, he's a fucking human Labrador. Do you know what I mean? He's always laughing and joking. He's not really being anyone's... He's not causing any bother. He's la he even laughs at fucking Brendan's jokes that aren't funny, but he's just treating him like that. Thank him. Thank who, motherfucker? You better thank your surgeon for that fucking lip you got about thank him. He's, so he's... So he was... Special Force. <laughs> That's a hint of racism, right, Eric? Yeah, the, the three hyper-success traits that make no, billionaires? No. Okay, there's... The first one is you Why? think you're better than everyone. <laughs> hey, yeah. what the fuck, the bro? Number, these what are, are you, these, a wood? Is him trying to be funny, right? Like trying to lean into being an edgy comedian. Like that's the thing, though. He doesn't have the courage to say this stuff on stage. He doesn't have the courage to actually say what he means because he's clearly trying to like lean into the right wing grift, right? He wants to be a bit of a right winger, but he's not smart enough to really lean into that grift, to really get into race politics, to really get into race science, to really start talking about, you know, societal issues and shit. Like actually get into the weeds, IQ, um, head sizes, brain sizes. He doesn't want that mess. He doesn't really, he's not really built for it. He thinks he is, but he's not really built for it. The, these Get are out of prison. The, that's a hint of racism, right, Eric? Yeah, that wings like calling. Uh, is that like calling a Mexican a wetback? Jesus Christ, man! Jesus Christ! The deafening silence around everybody. Yep, good joke, bro, Brendan. Let's call Mexican wetbacks. Yep, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. We live in LA, right? Let's live in LA. The whole of LA is fucking hung is fucking supported by fucking mexicans right i went in LA. that's one thing i was happy that i did when i went to la because i went to la around the same time that trump was president and around the same time he was saying ship all the mexicans back right that whole rhetoric he was going on about and i didn't have any context of what was happening so i go to i go to fucking la i land there i'm like holy shit it's all fucking mexicans or people that look like them from Mexico, maybe Hondurans, maybe Nicaraguans, but everybody in that kind of region, they're all from there, bro. That's all it is. Basically, exactly. Latina and white. That's all it is in LA. And then you look, go to all the stores, all the restaurants, it's only Latin, Latina people, Mexican people working there. That's all that's working there. So you think to yourself, hold on, what America is Trump actually looking at? These people are legitimately um, the bedrock, the framework, right, of what's holding that great state up in California. And here he is wanting to ship them all away. It makes absolutely no sense. Without fucking Mexicans, will, would California be what it is right now? Would it actually be even functioning? You know what I mean? It makes really no sense whatsoever. And it gave me a greater appreciation for those people because I saw them working everywhere. You see these guys um, doing construction things. They're on the back of pickup trucks going to try and find work. You see them, you know, up on fucking, um, what you call it, electricity lines. You see them working in burger shops, pizza restaurants, supermarkets, bodegas, delivery. These motherfuckers work fucking work nothing but work 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 and then to have some fucking privileged mongoloid fat-lipped you know dweeb in a in an air-conditioning podcast studio call you by racial slur is absolutely egregious absolutely egregious horrendous there's a hint of racism right here yeah that's okay crime in the african-american Look, and it, the 85 percent don't have dads listen, all of these all of these <laughs> what what 85 percent of us don't have dads are you fucking insane where do you even get that stat from <laughs> that even sounds like fucking bullshit 85 percent where where are all our dads ending up where are they all going guantanamo vietnam are they all dying or like what's happening Come on, bro. 85%. This guy's fucking smoking. Absolute rocks. He's doing too many fucking, um, what do you call it? Nicotine patches. 85% of us. 85. 50. Okay, cool. 85. That doesn't even sound like it makes sense. And look at Chappelle just sitting there. 85%. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's a hint of racism right here yeah, now these corporations like espn or whoever that get so woke and then they only put black people on and they're raising oh them. <laughs> my god no no <laughs> so what blacks are not block 
blacks are not Netflix. Blacks are blockbuster, right? Are blacks blockbuster on TV? What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Too many blacks. Ah, change the channel. All those nig nogs on my channel. Change it. All those blackies. Nah, change it. Fuck that shit. What the fuck is he talking about, man? Big up, thick boy. He's Pressing a number. <laughs> Big up, thick boy. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Why isn't it playing? Why isn't this fucking thing playing? Let's do it one more time. Big up, thick boy. Appreciate for your $2 super chat. Big up, thick boy. Appreciate for your $2 super chat, my friend. He's a number, guys, B. Oh, my God. 94% of all commercials now, I think. They just did a, a thing. 94% of the commercials, I think, during the Super Bowl had white black people like there's a hint of racism right here yeah. <laughs> there's a hint of racism right here what a piece of shit honestly man fuck brendan Shaw, man fucking hell that triggered me i didn't think it would but that fucking triggered me it's not even a racism it's just the fucking ignorance he's not even smart enough to be racist he's just fucking dumb he's dumb as fucking bricks legitimately dumb as bricks this is why i kind of understand and have some sympathy for bgl hear me out BGL freaked out, I think, because he got too f he got too close. No, he saw how the sausage he saw how the sausage was made. He didn't know how redacted Brendan was until he got close to him. Then he was like, "Hold on, you're in a big mansion. You drive all these fucking cars. You got all these fucking cool trainers, and you live this fucking life. But you're legitimately a double digit IQ person. You are fucking dumb as bricks." And it just fucking annoyed him because BJ obviously thinks of himself as a pseudo intellectual. So imagine being around someone like Brendan, who's aggressively anti, anti fucking intellectual, yet he seems to have figured out life better than you have, right? Like legitimately, legitimately, right? I can understand how BGL could be annoyed about that. He's probably turning up to work, having his girlfriend you know wife at a time drive him to work and drop him off he's getting dropped off in ubers he's maybe having to jump on a fucking public transport in la which is awful to get to the studio and here comes brendan in another car another car another car another car here's a ferrari and he's like hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. What the fuck is going on here? How is this fucking mongoloid, this redact, living life like this, and I have to share a one-bed apartment with my wife who pays all the bills, right? That's I can understand why he went crazy. I can understand why I had a freak out, really and truly, because Brendan is a legitimate redact, legitimately up there in terms of redactness. And think about this. The guy has two degrees. Two degrees. I only have one. He has two two degrees fucking hell absolutely insane god bless the american education system or god bless him for fucking you know finding out a way to finagle it because that is absolutely insane the guy's got two fucking degrees how i do not fucking know i do not fucking know you know you could you play sports in fucking university in college in fucking college in america and you get away with fucking murder man it's absolutely ridiculous how you guys do it over there oh my god oh yeah um big up jig i love the new words of, i love the new use of the word redacted yeah i don't take any credit for it that's all to do with the Fire the Kids subreddit. Those guys are fucking the ones that coined the term redacted. They're fucking legends. I take no credit for the term redacted. Those guys are the ones that coined it. So go and give those guys thanks and follow the homeless cats over there. Yes, Fick Boy, big up. Keep up the good content, dude. Brendan so redacted he is now doing shows in the mall. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you for the super chat, my friend. Thank you, Fick Boy. Yeah, that mall appearance is fucking brutal. You know what it is? I said before, right? When it comes to mall appearances and fucking ticket sales and shit, it's not that big of an issue. It's hard to sell tickets. Any, any of you guys out there have put on, put on events or tried to organize dinner dates with your friends and shit, you know how hard it is to get people to agree to all meet up at a set location, let alone to get people to part with their hard-earned money to come and see you at a show. It's difficult. But Brendan makes such a big deal and acts like such a fucking big dog, right? 
He acts like he's a fucking the mayor around here and shit. He kind of clowns everybody else for not selling tickets. When in actuality, he is the one struggling to sell tickets. But, come to think of it. Thinking about what I did the last stream. I actually think Brendan has always struggled to sell tickets. That's the fucking funny thing about this. He's always struggled to sell tickets. Because when I watched that first episode of TFAT K, episode number one, they mentioned in that episode that Brendan is filming um, You'd Be Surprised soon. And he's selling tickets for that first You'd Be Surprised, right? The, 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 the special he did with Showtime. And he said it was at the Spreckles Theatre. When I Googled the Spreckles Theatre, the capacity for Spreckles was at that time, or still is probably now, 1,400. And he hadn't sold out for his comedy special yet. And usually comedians do, when it's, your com when it's you filming a special, everyone wants to turn up for you, your fans and stuff, blah, blah, blah. You probably push the promo, boom. He didn't sell it out. So if he didn't sell out a theatre at the height of his fame, at the beginning, when he got the Showtime deal, it's no surprise now that he's struggling. So if anything, he's been slowly but surely bleeding um, a lack of ticket sales. It's been a death by a thousand cuts, actually, as Tony Hinchcliffe said. That's basically what it's been over time. But we didn't realize it because he was kind of smoking mirrors. But in actuality, he's never really been selling tickets based on his fame. Because if you think about it, for somebody who's had the most appearances on Rogan at that time, one of Rogan's best friends, always on a fight companion, all that promo, podcast, you know, him with him on him with Theo on a fight and a kid, the numbers are always going sky high. He should be getting he should be selling out easily at that stage. But he wasn't selling out back then. So it shows that it was always smoke and mirrors. It was always fucking fugaze. Always, always, always fugaze.